Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here for my daily video. And today I have it formatted where we're gonna do a spin around the studio first, and then I'm going to talk about crumb quilt blocks. Uh, and I have a question for you when we get to that. So be sure you hang in here. I wanna remind you that the old school block of the month is going on. So if you wanted to participate with, uh, we have 12 different designers and I'm in October and we're doing one block a month and each designer will show you something in their style. You might find different ways to create a block than you had before. Uh, so I wanna show you both of mine from the old school block of the month. Uh, here's the first one, which was Kim Lapachek's and then the second one, which was Nancy Scott's, and these are my version of them. Such yummy colors, right? It's gonna be an amazing fall quilt. And then I'm doing a little mini churn dash with, with each one. I just thought that would be fun to do. I thought they could be a, pill, a matching pillow to go with it in the end, or maybe a table runner. There'll be 12 of these. Um, I wanted to be sure that you got in on that if you hadn't joined yet, because it's fun. That's a, a relaxing, um, you probably see some interesting techniques based on the designers that I know are in there, which is really fun because you can try the technique on one block in a sampler. I love that part of it. Just, you know, just have a little taste of what it is. Okay, I have our Hope, our March Hope blocks, and I am, I've got sort of like a theme. We're going to, let me do something else first, and then I'll do the March Hope because that sort of rolls into the crumb blocks because that is where this fabric is coming from to do these crumb blocks and show you what that is is all from the hope blocks so let's look at some other things first i had a couple of you ask about the panel for the be grateful to see the panel so let's do that i i am frantically <laughs> This not that sound wild? I'm frantically sewing, um, but I'm, try I'm trying hard to get those blue blocks done so I can free the top of my tray. <laughs> this is like the first world problems, free the top of my tray. Uh, so this, this is so cute. I just love it, it is so cute. And the panel is amazing. So first, let me show you, this is the, the quilt again. The, and, and this is the one that I said, it looks so easy. Cause it is, it's a, the panels really do all the work. And then these, these darling little bees that are in there. The bees are between the panels, see them? But I seriously, I need to change the, I need to change the fabric for the bees. Uh, the bee wings, you know, whee, the little bee wings, because I, I can't see them. Uh, so I think I'm going to switch them out to the Morrison Park Gold. So that is what I think I will do. Okay, so the first let's look at the panel and then I'll show you the other fabric in there. All right, the panel comes in, I think a light background and this dark background. So when you get the kit, you get it in the dark background. Uh, here we go. So now you could just get the panel and put some borders on it. So it, I think it's pretty cute even as it is. This would be a really nice little wall hanging or even something for your door. But each um, section ha is really darling. So I'll just show you each one. I love the this wreath part. I just, Deb's artwork is so amazing. And then you have the center section. So that is sweet honey, so cute. So cute, and I like this. I like the, the flower part underneath the words. And then here are the bottom two, another sort of laurel wreath. And then there's the one with the, the bigger sunflower with all the cute sayings. So they go in the middle of these different parts. So when you look at this, I'll get it up close there, you can see the big one goes in the middle and then the four corner ones and then just the little bees. So it really is um, a very doable kit. So she says, now here, let me just show you the fabric. Uh, we've got a honeycomb, there's a honeycomb. And then this is what the bee wings are. It is a text print, very pretty, very pretty text print. Uh, and it's all against a white background on uh, the honeycomb. And then there's a nice gold, which, you know, this is a, in the inner border of the 
pattern. So you can see the inner border and part of the B bodies. I think the B bodies are pieced. And then there is a bigger piece of this gorgeous sunflower fabric and the pattern and white fabric. So this sunflower fabric is used all around the frames. So like the, the gold is used on the inner frames and then all of this is cut up to put around each of the blocks, which is, I just love, love, love this fabric. So if you want this kit, you can see it in the description box below, over at my website too, you can get the panel and I'll have a picture of the panel. I'll put up a picture of the panel at my website. So if you want to see it up close <laughs> or you want to analyze it, you can buy just the panel too. You don't have to buy the kit, but I want to get this. If I get the blue one out of the top of the rolling assistant, you know, I get those blocks made, then I can get these bees cut up and the little frames, the little frames around them cut up. So, and then it comes in this really pretty box. So you can have a nice, it's a gorgeous storage box. Look at the side of it. So if you had these, had it set, set on your shelf, isn't that pretty? You could put all kinds of other projects in there. <laughs> Not that we're ever lacking for projects, right? <laughs> I never feel like I'm lacking for projects. There seems to always be something going on. Now I had a couple people ask me about, uh, about a way to, put what they have like a, a small iron um, travel line, travel iron and they wanted to put it like on a, on a stand so they could just set it down like you do um, when you have a, like a silicon mat but I found this which is the same it's a trivet it's like a trivet for your iron so you should be able to this so here is what it is I found this thing and you open it up so it's got like the four legs and then it just becomes a heat resistant trivet. So you could put your iron right on there. Uh, and so you could be ironing like this, ding, 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 put it down. You could probably put a pan on here in your kitchen because this, all this is, is a heat resistant trivet. Very cool, very fun to use. So there you go. There's an option for you if you are looking uh, for a way to sort of protect your surface and you don't want to, sometimes the little irons don't stand on their end very well. Uh, when you buy the Olisa one, it has its own mat that comes with it. But a lot of the other travel irons, and you may have had travel iron for years, uh, so this is, this is a great way to be able to, ta-da, create a little trivet, little trivet for yourself. So let's talk about the Hope block, March Hope. Oh, before that, before that, wait, 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 one more thing. You still have time to make shamrocks. You still have time for shamrocks. I have to get my living room and dining room switched out in colors. And so once I do, then one of these this week, pictures this week, I'll, I'll show you uh, where I hung the, the shamrock, the bigger shamrock. But I want to remind you that there's the little one. So, so this is super cute. Even it, you could even do just the, the middle, just the shamrock itself. Uh, and you could make a couple of those into a little trivet. Uh, this is like, a, this is a mug rug version with sort of a half log cabin using as a half log cabin. If you did several half log cabins and just move them around, they would make a super cute table runner. Yes. Did you notice we're on the B side today? This is the B side of my studio, <laughs> the back side. <laughs> Normally I sit with the wall behind me so that you can see what I'm working on, but it was, I needed surface. So when I need better surface on that side, I only have like this little bitty space like this to, to work at. Okay, here we go, our hope blocks. <laughs> I did, I have two more now so that let me just show you those. I did this really pretty floral with the polka dots. Now, one of the interesting parts is when I have this um, white against white, like a white background center against white, it does do, it makes the image look different because you will see that this blends, but also the swans sort of pop out more because they are not, you know, they're, they're really dark against, against the white. 
So that's kind of a cool effect. I like it when there are some that are like this, that they aren't all so crisp and distinct like this one. This is what I would call crisp and distinct because it has a white background and this does is a pink. So they're very, you know, there's enough contrast. You see exactly what, what the center is. Whereas this one's a little floaty. That's what I would say. It's like the swans float. But I like that when you're doing a scrap quilt and you have a lot, when you have variety like this, I think it makes your eye really look around. So I will have several blocks in this effect. So like three, five, seven, it gives your eye that, and, and then move them. So they're not all like in one corner of your quilt. You don't want all of the same sort of things together. Move them around and your eye sees that and it's very appealing. So I have to tell you something about this block, <laughs> this one here. Okay, so you see this fabric on the outside? This fabric I have had, what is that term? For donkey's years? I had a friend that used to say that all the time. I've had that for donkey's years. Um, <laughs> how old is a donkey anyways? I don't know. That always seems kind of, <laughs> but this is true on this one. I've had it forever. Here it is. Uh, it, I don't think there's an edge on it. It was by High Fashion Fabrics, who, who knows, who knows who was ma manufacturing that under that brand name. So there's some pieces out of it, and this is all of this I have left. Now I did a quilt, oh, maybe about my, less than 10, it would, you know, like somewhere under my 10th quilt, you know, fifth quilt, something like that. I did this quilt uh, with bright pink and this black. And I called it here. I'll find a picture and I'll, I'll put it. I'll put a picture up here. So I entered this quilt in my quilt show for my guild. When I joined the guild, they told me, oh, we have a quilt show. And I'm like, I was so new. I didn't really know what a quilt show was. So they said, well, you have to enter something in the show. Like I didn't have a choice. I didn't realize I had a choice. I thought like I had to do it. So <laughs> I thought I would enter this one. And then they told me, well, you have to have a name for it. And I was like, oh, this is a lot of work. I gotta make it and have a name. Okay, so I named it when Dalmatians wear lipstick, you know, because this looks like Dalmatian fabric <laughs> and it's got the pink. So that thing did not hang straight. When they, you know, for some reason, mine got hung up higher, uh, maybe because it was, I was a very new quilter, so there was a, probably lots of construction issues in that one. I didn't care, um, but they hung it up and when it was hanging, it was like, <laughs> it wasn't square. The quilt itself isn't quite square. Um, and when it was hanging, I could kind of see that. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. I guess I have to learn that next. How do you make those things square after you make them? <laughs> Always something new to learn. So that is my one Dalmatians. Well, my Dalmatians were lipstick and I'm thrilled to use that fabric. And I, I didn't realize I had such a big piece of it left. So when I got it out, I was like, oh, so there's, I'll use it at least two of the blocks for the March Hope, so. Let's talk about these crumbs. People have been using the term crumb blocks for a while. I'm not sure where that came from. Back when I first started to do this technique, it was not called crumb blocks at all. So the term came, or at least nobody I knew or, or you know, used it. I was just making new fabric. I was sewing up fabric sort of small pieces, making a bigger new piece of fabric, and then that I would use in something else. So basically designing like my own piece of fabric. And so I'm gonna sh walk through this and show you how I approach doing that, uh, how I look at the scraps that's coming, coming from, so I've got this whole pile of scraps I'm gonna show you that are coming from these hope blocks. So as I'm cutting things, there's little sections left and I'm keeping them. Now, what I would like to do is while I'm showing you this, think about this and then leave me a comment either here at YouTube or over at my website because I'm interested in, uh, you know, do, for me, I don't normally sit here and just do one thing. You know, I joked about that the other day. I had four things, you know, that, was, that wasn't that was very many for me. Uh, normally when I do these videos, they're uh, sit and chat in my studio and it's about all the things that are going on or what I'm thinking or what you're thinking or answering questions. And so it's not a focused one topic like a lot of 
people do. Other, a lot of people do what I do as well, but um, usually not in the quilt industry. <laughs> Quilters, the quilt videos tend to be one thing. You come in, you make this one block and you're done. Uh, and that just, I just don't enjoy that for the most part. But I thought that it might be fun to do a little series taking something where I can talk about color and talk about how things change and how you work through the process of it because that's the stuff that really excites me about quilt making. Uh, so I'm going to do this with a crumb block and let me know uh, if you liked, liked seeing that, if you like this format, um, this topic and maybe I will set up a little series and then do them just the one thing in that video. Uh, so I don't know, not on a schedule or anything. I have so many scheduled things. I don't want to say I'll do this the, you know, X number, the day of the week. It's like, no, I don't want to get too regimented, but I don't mind doing a, like a little series and then that would be done. Okay. So crumb blocks. What I've done is I've taken these design boards and I've put some of the things on here and gotten them ready to talk about. Now the one really nice part uh, with the design boards is you, did you know that you can stack them? Like this is the 14 inch and this is, I have to look, this is the 10 inch. So like I can stack them. So I have all these 10 inches like this and as you're working, you can just stack them. They don't stick to the bottom because the bottom is, uh, you know, a harder stuff. It doesn't have the flannel or the fleece on there. So they just stack up super nice. Everything looks really good. All right, so as I'm making these blocks, let's come in here. Okay, my little handle isn't working on my thing there. Okay, here we go. So as we're making these blocks, I am collecting up parts. You know, these are just parts of, you know, they're, they're, uh, I, did, I cut some of it and this is extra. These are usable parts. So I'm clipping them and putting them in this, in the storage bin. So they're, they're over here in the storage bin so that I can get to them. Uh, but this pile here are parts that are really tiny. So there you can see, you know, I've got, small pieces and I try to do a, a straight edge. That's the one, whoops, uh, let me get this down here. So I have a little more table space. All right. So I try to do a small, I try to do a straight edge, get them to a straight edge so that I'm not dealing with, um, you know, a jagged piece, uh, trim them. There's a really tiny one. And so what I did is I took these and put them by size. So these are larger pieces. Uh, here are kind of like mid-size. These are more all rectangles, like little strips, and they might, you know, they're not all the same um, width or length, but they're all basically strips, and these are all more squares. Like here's one that's got a, here, let me put it there. Do you see it's, it has this angle in it? Well, that is not usable, you know, not real usable, so I try not to, I try to clean those up before I stack them here. And then I have longer strips in this backside here where they might be fairly skinny. Like here's one that is it's fairly skinny. It actually goes down to a little point. It's wider, it's wider at one end. I'm not cleaning that up. So I'll put it out here. I'm not cleaning this up. It's skinny at this end, wide at that end. I just leave that. Don't do extra work when you're doing this. Just cut it off and, and put it in the pile. And like here is one um, that's it is a little wider at the one end. So I just leave that. And now I've got these working units. One of the things I want to talk about is what to do with these size. These, this one, I actually could get for the hope block. I could get the three and a half inch strip out of here, or I could have cut it up into like two and a half inch squares for my scrap system that I'm keeping. But I decided to keep a few of them just to keep this large size because I might want to cut it in half. Um, you know, it gives me an option. And then these are a little bit bigger. Uh, this one is not quite three and a half, so it's too small. And those will be used, these will be used for like a starter for like the middle. And I'm not really going log cabin style. I'm just creating sort of chunks and units as I go along. 
So let me show you this, this one here now. What I did here was build out a few blocks. And I'll show you some easy ones first so that you can identify them. There's the swan strip and I added uh, uh, two pieces. One's skinny, one's wider. One is longer. Do you see it's longer? And that one's longer. And it's actually not even. Now one of the things you want to do is when you're working with these is you want to be sure, I'm getting a ruler here, is you want to be sure that when you start sewing the next ones you can eyeball it but it's better if you trim it. And you don't have to trim it to a size, you just need to trim it even. So I will just trim it even and then go on this side and trim it even. I'm using my Ulfa products here, my sweet Ulfa rolled recutter and ruler. So now these are straight. And do I straighten these edges here? I think I did that, well this one might not be. This smaller one is not straight. See if I put that there, it's wider at the top than at the base. So I want to do that. Now do I religiously do this? No. No. I can't even talk to you here. I've got it down too far. But uh, no. I don't do it absolutely every time. Sometimes if I think it is uh, good enough or close enough, I can be sure that I don't mess it up while I'm laying the next piece on top. So let me show you another couple here because these are just how, this is the play, which is so fun. This is the fun of making these sort of crumb blocks or just made fabric is I sewed these two together and then I thought, well, what can I get on the top? I had this bird piece, but then it wasn't wide enough. So I added another pink piece to it. Over here, I had one of those bigger squares and then once again, built things out. But like over here, the the Dalmatian fabric is too long, uh, so I would need to trim that up. Um, but like if I didn't trim that up and I wanted to put a piece of fabric on top to sew it, I would just be sure, do you see it's hanging out here? I would be sure that I'm not doing this, you know, not trying to match it to the outside because then you're going to get a lot of uneven fabric and your fabric is going to warp and rotate and you're going to create these weird things like bra cups and stuff as you go along. So I could get away with this because I've done it a lot, um, but you could also just trim it so that you know what you're doing. And then here's another one. I think this one is super cool. Let's get a little closer. So this guy is, I had some parts. I had a some triangle pieces or just that I cut off because I was trimming and I sewed two of those together and then sewed an, a pink one to the side and then I sewed this strip on the bottom. And you can see here like this pink one still has this piece of fabric stuck on there and I'll just trim that off. This is not straight or square at all. So it would need some definite trimming up to be sure that you know everything looks good to sew some more stuff onto it. Because like if I do this, I'm gonna cut that off, plus there's a little piece like winging out to the side here, I would trim that down. So these are some working, these are some working units that I would continue to build around them. And let me just show you one, because it's easier to see sort of on this guy, if I am going to trim around, uh, going to add around him, uh, I might take the strip, the set of strips and go, okay, well, what if I want to put this guy here, but he's not long enough. So maybe I would sew this piece on the end and then it'll probably be long enough. Then I might go, all right, so I can take this longer strip that I have here and it looks like it's probably going to fit over there. And then maybe I would build this here and then put a piece across, uh, Let's see, because sometimes you can go across and you can accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. I can get a swan in there uh, and then maybe another flower. Now you want, to, like these are all going to be sewn together. So they'll actually be, you know, the seam allowances will take up space like this. So you might actually need to put one more down here to get the uh, sizing correct on in getting that strip. So there I'm building out this 
rectangle, this, um, yeah, it was a rectangle, and getting it more into the size of a square. Um, let me show you one that's a little, I'm gonna put this all together because that didn't look too bad. Uh, here's one that I did that's al almost to the size that I want to keep it. So I have, this is the block. So here you go, there's the block. And if I wanted to build a little bit more, I liked the, adding this turquoise down here and this yellow. So I know that they, there's not enough of them to go across, but, but it can go pretty far, but then I have to add something on the end. So I'll probably add the pink. And then this piece will be, I will keep that to about that block, about like that. So that'll be a little bit, it won't be square. It'll be a little bit more rectangular. Um, but close to a square. So I could build it out just a little bit more. This would be a six and a half inch ruler. I could build it out to a seven inch square or just leave it. Here is one that is all finished. And you can see here that, you know, this is not even. That would get trimmed off. This would get trimmed off. This would get trimmed off. And if I put the ruler on there, so this guy is probably about a, a seven inch square as well. I will not trim these. When I get to this point where I, uh, I have a block and I've used up a lot of fabric and I've got, got something workable like this one, when I get to this point, I stop. I don't trim it down because I don't know, depending on what I'm going to do with it, am I going to use them as is? then I wanna make everything the same size eventually, but I don't need to do it now. I can do it when I have, let's say I wanna do 12 of them. Well, when I have 12 of them, then I will find the common size. Are they all seven and three fourths square? Can I get everybody to seven and three fourths square easily? Do most of them trim down to that, but maybe one of them I have to make a little bit bigger. Okay, that's, that's good. I wanna get them as big as possible, particularly if there's no size. If I'm just gonna like put sashing between them, a solid sashing and just use them as is, if I'm going to subcut them and put them into like a traditional quilt block, then this gives me the ability, I wouldn't even need to trim them so much if it's gonna be a traditional quilt block until I know which block I'm gonna make. Then I'll know what size I need. Maybe it's a churn dash and I need some that are gonna be the points for the half square triangles and some that will be rectangles. So I don't wanna take away my options until I get there. So I think this is the easiest way ever to make crumb blocks. I, you know, they're using up your little scraps. Uh, you sort them like this to begin with uh, so that you know what sizes you have and you can work with. And then you start building them out to get to this point. So I hope you enjoyed that. And that's, this, is, this segment here is something that I'm curious if you would be interested in seeing as that is all that's in the video for that day. Like I wouldn't be showing you the block of the day and you know I wouldn't be you know telling you some other stuff. It would just be we're gonna do that one process that day. Um, and if I did that, I might fire up the sewing machine and have the iron and do a little bit more so that I can do a little bit more of the process. Um, straight through here. I'd have to do it here on the B side of the room uh, because <laughs> there's no room on the other side to do this kind of spread out stuff. All right, my friend. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging in here. And I hope that you enjoyed seeing this process of mine and how I think through working with these small pieces. And I'm loving these blocks. I am going to do through all through March Hope. I will take all the little scraps and we'll make up as many of these blocks as I can and see what, what I have and then decide what I wanna do with them afterwards. <laughs> that could be its own video, right? What do you do with all of these? So I love you. Uh, all the links are below uh, and I'll see you online. Mwah.